Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Alt 24 Breaking News, and the headlines as follow. New coronavirus variant Omicron kept spreading all over the world and raises concern as to Beijing place took measures to curb it. Plus, United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken is deeply worried by Ethiopia's military escalation and has called for urgent talks to resolve the problem. And in sports, Palmeiras sees over Flamingo in extra time to retain Copa Libertadores title. Hello again. Those were today's headlines. First in our top stories, Mohammed Sharfi Authority's chairman announced this morning that the election's participation rate was 35% in Commonwealth assemblies and 34 in provincial ones. More in this report. The local elections began yesterday as polling stations opened at 8 a.m. and closed at 7 p.m. with more than 15,000 candidates running for the elections. Voters were not numerous in the morning, but stations saw more crowds in the afternoon. Abdel Majid Taboun, the president of the Republic, accomplished his electoral duty yesterday in Ahmed Uruwa School in Stawali, west of Algiers, and affirmed that the local elections are the last stage for the building of a modern state. La citoyenneté est un apprentissage. Citizenship is a learning process. It's not innate, yet voting remains a national duty. We should all keep each other aware of this. This is the last stage for the building of a modern state with the participation of its children, who choose their representatives. We will build an economically strong state within democracy and citizen freedom. According to the president of the National Independent Authority for Elections, Mohamed Shorfi, the turnout rate was of 35.97% in communal assembly and 34.39% in provincial assembly. The number of electors right after closing the polling stations reached around 8 million voters, where the turnout rate was of 35.97% in communal assemblies and 34.39% in the provincial assemblies. The turnout rate reached an average of 35%, or 12 points more than the last election, the legislative elections in June. The French government took a decision of postponing the vaccine mandate which was set to take place among the French medical staff. This decision was taken after the last protest which erupted in two Caribbean islands in rejection of the mandate vaccine. The protest left injured police officers and journalists were attacked. The measure of mandatory vaccine is already in infection over the French territory. World countries started detecting cases of the new Omicron COVID-19 variant as many countries announced positive tests of most people returning from South Africa countries. European countries already banned flights coming from South African countries as a first measure in response to the fast spread of this strain. Complexity and panic represent the dominant image of the world after the discovery of a new COVID-19 variant in South Africa. And most countries are racing to introduce travel bans and restrictions over southern African countries. Starting from Monday, the USA is banning flights from South Africa and seven African countries, with exception only for American citizens and residents. Austria discovered its first Omicron suspect in Trial, who is a traveller who returned back from South Africa and tested positive with the symptoms of the new variant. But according to Trial officials, confirmation needs more sequencing. After two cases were confirmed in the UK, British Health Secretary stated that vaccine may be less effective against the new Omicron variant. And mandatory mask wearing starts on Tuesday as a temporary measure in response to the new strain. But we now need to go further and implement a proportionate testing regime for arrivals from across the whole world. So, 
Urgent testing started in Australia after two people returning in a flight from South Africa were detected with a new variant. Australian authorities imposed new restrictions starting from Saturday on people coming from nine African countries. Bavaria's health organization announced the isolation of two people who came back from South Africa with symptoms of the new Omicron variant of COVID-19 and South Africa's considered a virus variant area. Over 60 passengers were suspected to have the new corona variant in the Netherlands. The passengers returned this week from South Africa, according to Dutch officials. Most countries around the world are in a race with this rapidly spread COVID variant, and the world is about to witness new restrictions and stricter impositions. Staying in Europe, new COVID-19 cases have been discovered among passengers who flew in from South Africa, according to the Dutch health officials, who suspect some of the illness are of the new Omicron strain. The cases were detected among 624 passengers arriving on two flights at Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport on Friday. Those who tested positive have been placed in isolation facility near the airport. The World Health Organization named the new and potentially more transmissible coronavirus variant as Omicron, describing it as a variant of concern. They said that multiple studies are underway as advisors continue to monitor this letter. Zara Fergeni on what follow. The health officials have stated that the new Omicron coronavirus variant has shown the pandemic is far from over. Despite only being tracked for the past five days, the virus has already been found to have 30 different mutations. The mutations contain features seen in all of the other variants, but also traits that have not been seen before. And the mutations um, show evidence of uh, increased transmissibility, increased infectivity, and also evidence that it could evade the immune response and also the um, uh, treatment uh, with monoclonal antibodies such as Ronaprev. All those are very concerning. It is too early to say vaccines protect people against Omicron. Work is underway to see whether the new variant may be causing new infection in people who have already had coronavirus or whether waning immunity may be playing a role. It's the mutations that again tell us that it has differences that are there. However, the vaccine is not an all or nothing. And I think it's really important, even more important now that people come out and get their booster doses, because having high levels of um, immune response from the booster dose is the one thing that will help overcome this sort of variation. The vaccine um, in, in, the introduces not only antibodies in our system, but also introduces T cell responses, which are very broad. And so while I think this may reduce the effectiveness of vaccine compared to other variants, I don't think it will mean the vaccine won't work completely. But what it does mean that, you know, boosters become even more important right now. So far, cases of the variant have appeared primarily in young people, leaving them exhausted and with body aches and soreness. Pfizer BioNTech, which has produced a vaccine against COVID-19, is already studying a new variant's ability to evade vaccines. French President Emmanuel Macron and Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi in the presence of the Italian President Sergio Mattarella signed a rate treaty of enhanced bilateral cooperation to strengthen relations damaged in recent years by diplomatic disputes. More in this report. France and Italy signed on Friday amid great media coverage in Rome a treaty of enhanced bilateral cooperation in order to strengthen relations damaged in recent years by diplomatic disputes. And in an atmosphere of European transformation with the departure of the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The treaty was initially at the Corinale Presidential Palace by French President Emmanuel Macron and Prime Minister Mario Draghi in the presence of the Italian President Sergio Mattarella. Draghi stated in a joint press conference with his counterpart, President Emmanuel Macron, that the treaty marks a historic moment in the relations between the two countries and highlighted the importance of having a policy of managing migrant flows. This enhanced cooperation treaty that we signed this morning marks a historic moment in the relationship between our countries. Regarding migration, we recognize the need for a policy of managing migration flows and asylum shared by the European Union based on principles of responsibility and solidarity. 
We are committed to protecting our agricultural systems. On this matter, we reach the common position. It is a fundamental issue for our two countries. For his part, President Emmanuel Macron highlighted major projects of common European interests. Nous avons acté aussi. We have noted a common vocation through major projects of common European interest, whether in hydrogen, the cloud or space. And this morning, we have noted an important agreement on space, which will give new impulses to this industry, which is so important for both our civil and military activities. And from clarification in the field of launchers to new projects, we are also writing a very important page in our space cooperation. The Treaty of Enhanced Bilateral Cooperation, called the Corinali Treaty, is very rare in Europe. And it is only the second that France concludes after the LZ Treaty initialized in 1963 with Germany and enhanced by the Treaty of Aichen in 2019. According to media reports, demonstrations in the northern part of the city of Alexandropoli protest amid increased American military presence in Greece. Various trade union, passionaries union, student union, and the local branch of International Detention and Peace Committee took part in the demonstration organized by the Committee of Struggle Against the Greek-American Military Treaty and the base in Alexandropoli, according to the news outlets. United States Secretary, Secretary of, of uh, State Antony Blinken said that he is greatly concerned about Ethiopia's military escalation and called for urgent negotiations over the crisis. Ethiopia State affiliated Vana Broadcasting reported that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed was on the front line with the army fighting Tigrayan forces in the northeastern Afar region. Tensions have risen again on the borders of Ethiopia and Sudan after clashes between Sudanese army forces and Ethiopian army, which left casualties among the two sides. The two clashes took place in Al Fashaka, which is considered as another focus on tension between the two countries. Islam Seed on what follow. Without giving the ultimate death toll, according to military sources, more than six Sudanese soldiers were killed by Ethiopian forces in a disputed border region. A Sudan military has said that Ethiopian militias and army forces intended to frighten farmers and destroy the harvest season before attacking Sudanese forces, whose mission was to secure the harvest in Fashaka. However, Sudanese troops deterred the attack and inflicted heavy losses in lives and equipment on the Ethiopian army. Al Fashaka is a border zone claimed by Sudan, but traditionally cultivated by Ethiopian farmers. The zone, which is also borders Ethiopia's unstable Tigray region, has seen periodic violent clashes in recent years, but then worsened last year. Tensions intensified after conflict broke out in Tigray in November 2020, sending tens of thousands of refugees into Sudan. Since then, Khartoum and Addis Ababa have been engaged in a violent verbal battle over the region, accusing each other of violence and territorial violations. According to the semi-official Isna News Agency, the Iranian negotiating team led, led by Ali Baghari Kani held bilateral and trilateral meeting in Vienna on Sunday ahead of reception of nuclear talks to bring back a, two, a 2015 agreement between Iran and major powers. Iranian diplomat Mohammed Rabi told Isna that the Iranian team arrived in Vienna on Saturday and began expert-level meeting with the heads of the Russian and Chinese negotiating teams, as well as the EU coordinator Enrique Mora. Kyrgyzstan is voting parliamentary polls as tensions rise after claims of plot, of plot to answer populist President Sidr Zabarov, who rose to power in post-vote unrest last year. There was a little sign of excitement about the vote on Sunday in the capital, Beshek, where both Russian and Kyrgyz are spoken. The vote expected to deliver 90 seats, parliamentary largely loyal to Zabarov. 
China and Russia have broadly condemned what they see as destabilizing U.S. military moves near their respective borders and have jointly called for intensifying the already growing strategic partnership. On Friday, Chinese ambassador to the United States, Ching Gang, and Russian ambassador to the United States, Anatoly Antonov, jointly published an article in the National Interest magazine titled Respecting People's Democratic Rights to criticize the Biden administration's Summit for Democracy on December 9th and 10th, which will stoke up ideological confrontation, according to the article. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, will hold a virtual Summit for Democracy in which this will fuel up ideological clash and a split in the world establishing new dividing lines since it is entirely a product of its Cold War mentality. This trend runs counter to the modern world's development. The formation of a global polycentric architecture is essential, but may put a burden on the objective process. China and Russia are fiercely opposed to this plan, as stated in the article. The event that will take place in early December will be the first of two democratic summits hosted by Biden. According to the U.S. Department of State, it will focus on three important themes, defending against authoritarianism, confronting and fighting corruption, and promoting respect for human rights. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida vowed at his first parade of forces to consider all options, including acquiring the ability to strike enemy bases. Kishida also pledged to create a strong self-defense force to protect the country amid growing threats from China and North Korea. Hussam reports. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kushida voted at his first parade of forces Saturday to consider all options, including acquiring the ability to strike enemy bases. He explained that the security situation around Japan is changing rapidly, and the reality is becoming more dangerous than ever, with Pyongyang continuing to test ballistic missiles and developing its capabilities, and Beijing seeking to display its military capabilities and increasingly aggressive activity in the region. He added that Japan will consider all options, including having the so-called attack capabilities on enemy bases with the aim of continuing to strengthen the necessary defense force. The security environment surrounding our country is showing major changes at an unprecedented speed. I have made instructions to revise the national security strategy, national defense program guideline, and medium-term defense program plans. Among them, we will consider all options including possessing the capability to attack the so-called enemy bases to strengthen our defense power that is necessary. Kishida also pledged to create strongest self-defense force to protect the country amid growing threats from China and North Korea. Japan is concerned about China's increasing pressure on Taiwan because control of the island would bring Chinese forces within 100 kilometers of its territory and would endanger key maritime trade routes that supply Japan with oil and other goods. U.S. Black Friday witnesses less shoppers than usual in malls and fewer discounts as sales shifts online. And in Europe, activists blockaded Amazon's warehouse to call attention to Amazon's business practices and wastefulness of Black Friday. More to be clarified in this report. Yesterday was the first Black Friday since the corona vaccination became widely available in the United States before the pandemic. As more Americans returned to outlets on one of the busiest shopping days of the year, the offers were among the least generous in years. And as stated in Salesforce.com, the average discount on products purchased in the last few days was only 24% in the U.S. Rob Ferguson, the vice president of Salesforce.com Retail, confirmed in an interview that the start of this year's holiday season has come to the lowest average discount rates that we have ever seen in recent history. Well, I came here because I figured since it was Black Friday they'd have the new Switch OLED in stock, but they didn't. <laughs> so I'm just going to go home, I guess. The Target New York store has less than half as many people compared to Black Friday's prior to the coronavirus outbreak. 
And according to mother and daughter shopping at Texas Mall on Friday, there was no pushing and shoving and the usual crowds on Black Fridays. In Europe, activists blockaded Amazon warehouses on Black Friday, protesting against Black Friday's wastefulness, along with Amazon's business practices' impacts on environment and negligence of workers' rights. In the UK, activists blockaded the entrance to Amazon's warehouse in Tilbury. And in Scotland's Amazon distribution, Dunfermline, 20 rebels locked themselves together and stopped trucks from entering and leaving. As a response, Amazon said it takes responsibilities extremely seriously, but did not directly address the protests. To some sport news, Arab teams began arriving in Doha in preparation for the 10th edition of FIFA Arab Cup, which begins on this November and until the December 18th, with the participation of 16 teams from the International Football Association. The Omani team was the first Arab team that landed at Hamad International Airport on Friday morning. The teams of Iraq, the UAA and Syria arrived during Friday afternoon. The teams of Tunisia, Morocco and Bahrain will arrive during the evening period. On Saturday, Algeria, Mauritania, Jordan, Lebanon and Egypt will arrive in Doha. Saudi Arabia and Sudanese teams will arrive on Sunday. The Palestinian team decide to enter close camp in preparation for the competitions. Doha is preparing to host the Arab Brothers in World Cup atmosphere less than a year before the start of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. Also, it's an opportunity for the Arab Brothers to celebrate with Qatar. The opening of two of its World Cup stadiums and celebrate the National Day on December 18 with the conclusion of the tournament. The opening ceremony of the tournament will be held on November 30 at the Beit Stadium and will include musical performances by famous singers, fireworks displays, as well as a section on history of the Arab world that narrates the exploits of Arabs, their unity and solidarity. To the American South continent, Pal Palmeiras won the Copa Libertadores for the second year in a row as an extra time goal secured a 2-1 win over Flamingo in an absorbing old Brazilian final. The results in a personal triumph for Palmeiras Portuguese coach Abel Ferreira, who becomes the first European to win the Libertadores twice following victory over Santos in January. It is also the first time a team has successfully defended the Libertadores title since Boca Junior in 2001. To this end, let's have a check again over our main stories. New coronavirus variant on Omicron keeps spreading all over the world and raises concern as to put in place strict measures to curb it. The United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is deeply worried by Ethiopia's military escalation and has called for urgent talks to resolve the problem. And in sports, Palmeiras see of Flamingo in extra time to retain Copa Libertadores title. That's all what we have got for now. See you at 6. Peace.